All right, so if you are brand new to Angular 2, and if you're kind of new to all this stuff that's going on in web development lately, stuff like ES 2015 and ES 2016 and TypeScript and all of these new things, then there's a chance that you might not really recognize some of the things that are going on here in the application. So for example, you might not be too familiar with things like the import statements that we see here or some other things like decorators or classes, and these are all modern modern JavaScript features. So these are all features of ES 2015 or ES 2016, so the latest versions of JavaScript, and consequently they're also used in TypeScript. So really TypeScript is a superset of ES 2015 and 2016. It gives us the language features that are available within those and also adds type information. So stuff that we're seeing here are things like import and decorators and classes. Those aren't specific to TypeScript, but they're still made use of in TypeScript. So it'll be useful here if we get just kind of a base understanding of how an Angular 2 project is wired up. So the way that Angular 2 is distributed is things are broken up into various packages. So everything that we see here, things like Angular Platform Browser and Angular Core, Angular Forms and HTTP, those are all individual packages that are published to NPM. And each of these packages has various modules within them that we consume in our own Angular applications. So one thing that we can kind of get a sense of here is that they're broken up by concern. So we've got a forms module, and that's obviously going to give us some functionality for forms. We've got an HTTP module, and that's going to allow us to make HTTP requests in our app. The next thing to mention is that Angular is very component driven. So when we talk about constructing our applications at a high level, really what we want to keep in mind is that we want to think in components. And a component within our application would generally have some specific functionality and it might have a template or a view associated with it and also some other things like its own styles. When we started our project with the Angular CLI, we were given a component to get going with. And that component is here. It's this app component. And this component has some various things associated with it. So one of those things is that it's got its own TypeScript file. And within this TypeScript file, we find an app component class. And this class here is kind of what defines the component or allows us to make use of it. With the component, we also have a template. So here we've got that simple title that's being templated out within an H1. And then we've also got a spot to put some styles. So keep that in mind as you're learning Angular 2 here. It's all about components. It's all about creating various components that have different pieces of functionality and different purposes, and then assembling them all together. So Angular 2 apps are very much component-based and they're also very module-based. So up here, we've got all sorts of different modules that we're bringing in. And these modules all have their own distinctive functionality. And so in this way, we can think of these modules as as these isolated blocks that can be brought together to build an application. So having a modular design like this can be really beneficial, and there's a lot of scenarios where our applications could benefit from it, and some of these get kind of advanced, so we won't focus too much on that right now, but what we will focus on is that an Angular 2 application has to have at least one module. It has to have a root module which bootstraps the application or gets the application going. And in our case, that's happening here within this app.module.ts file. And what I'd like to focus on now is how we are declaring a module for our application here. And the way that we do that is with the ng module decorator. So decorators are this language feature of ES 2016. And essentially what they do is they give us a way to modify the behavior of a class or a property. And so in the case of classes, this means that we can add metadata to them. And the way that decorators work is we put an at sign to denote that it's a decorator, and then we put the name of the decorator, and that all has to sit just above the class that we want to apply it to. And if we had a property that we wanted to decorate, we'd put the decorator name to the left of the property. And we'll see more on that later on. For now, it's just good to know that Angular 2 makes extensive use of decorators. And again, they give us this way of altering the behavior of class classes and properties just really simply, really just by placing something declaratively just near whatever we're trying to alter. So why don't we take a look here at what's happening when we tell Angular about our root module. So why don't we take a look here at what happens when we define a module for our application. 
So here within our ng module decorator, we've got this object and it lists some things that we want to tell our application about. The first thing here is that we want to make some declarations. We want to tell our application about the components that we've created in it. And so we've got our first one here, our app component. And anytime we make a new component, we're going to put it into this declarations list. This is going to tell our application about the components that we have. The next one here is an imports list. And since we need to make use of various modules that Angular 2 provides, we need to list them here in our imports list. This is going to tell our application that we've imported some modules and we want to make use of them in our app. We've got this array here called providers, and that's where we're going to register any injectable services that we create. And there's nothing in here right now because we haven't actually created any injectable services, but there are a few that we'll make in this application. So so we'll see that a little later on. And finally, we need to tell our module what it should bootstrap with. We need to tell it which component is the top level component, which one is the main component for our application. And in this case, it's this app component, this component here that got created for us when we started our new application. So we're telling Angular that we've got this top level components and that that's what it should bootstrap itself with. So now any of the other components that we create in our application will be child components of our main app component here. And that's the only one we have to put in this bootstrap array. So again, our ng module decorator here is going to tell Angular about how our application fits together, how these various blocks of functionality come together to create our app. And if this is a little bit confusing right now, that's okay. It's really more of a configuration area and we'll get a sense of how it works a little bit more as we go and we see some additions to it. Now let's go back over to our main app component for a second and take a look again at what we've got here. And as you've probably noted already, there's another decorator at play here. And this one is the component decorator. So this decorator again takes an object that has some configuration values for us. And one of those is a name for the selector that we want for our component. And in this case, it's app root. We can define templates for our component. So that's the views that will be used by the component. And in this case, we're giving it a template UI URL. And what that means is that we're referencing another file that is our component. Now, if we wanted to, we could define the template for this component right here in line. But in this case, it's coming from another file. And that other file is right here at app component.html. And then finally, we've got this styles URL key here, which again points to another file. And in this case, it's our CSS styles. And right now there's no styles applied. And just like our template, we could put our styling right here within our component decorator. But the default for the Angular CLI is that for templates and for styles, they are put in external files. Some people prefer to have their templates and their styles right within the component file. And that's certainly a valid use. I personally like to have them in separate files just because I think it keeps things a little bit more clean. Okay, so the last note before we get on to creating a component is that we've got this selector here and it's called app-root. And what I'd like to point out is that right here within our index.html file, so this is the main file that gets loaded when our application starts, we've got that app root tag. So right here, we're calling our app root component, which comes from app.component.ts. And that comes via our selector here. We've set a selector of app root. And so we can do this throughout our application We'll actually do this a little later on where we refer to our components via their selectors and we call upon them using their selector names. All right, so that's enough explanation for now, I think. We'll see some more pieces of this as we go and things will start to kind of come together more and more as we actually build the application. All right, so just before we wrap this video up, why don't we create a new component? And the first thing that we'll want to tackle in our application is being able to list out our data, being able to see the details of our data on the screen. And for that, why don't we create a component called crib listing? And this is something that the Angular CLI helps us out with rather than us having to go and create a new component with all of the stuff that it needs, like its TypeScript file and its HTML and CSS, we can just generate it with the Angular CLI. So let's go over to the command line and here within our project folder, let's generate a new component. And to do that, we do ng g for generate. And then we tell it what we want to generate, which is a component. And then let's give it a name and we'll call it crib listing. 
So now we've got an indication that everything was created for us. And if we take a look back over at our project, now what we see is we've got our crib listing component coming in from a folder called crib listing, and it's been added to our declarations array for us. So that's another really cool and helpful feature of the Angular CLI. Whenever we create a component, it gets imported for us automatically and added to our declarations list. So we don't have to do that by hand. So what we can do is check out within our crib listing folder, we've got our TypeScript file that gives us a class of crib listing component. And for this class, we've got our component decorator again. And this time it's called app-crib-listing. And we've got some external files that we're referencing, an HTML file and a CSS file. And also within this class, we are implementing something called on init. And essentially what that's going to give us is the ability to do something whenever this component starts up. So we've got this lifecycle hook for this component and we access it via ng on init and that's going to allow us to do certain things whenever this component gets initialized and we'll take a look at that later on all right so in the next video let's get all of our data in place and let's get it displayed on the screen